testimony on your heart? It's good to be saved. Amen. 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 We appreciate you tonight. This is our Wednesday night Bible study, so we always open up with altar prayer. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer on your heart. Remember Henry, he's got a, a sore throat. Amen. Let's remember little Henry. And that Larry Stout is Larry Stout family now, too. I... All right, anybody else? Do you remember Brother Danny? I know he's uh, got his procedures tomorrow, actually, right? Tomorrow? That's what I thought. I said it out today, but I, I, I did send it this morning, but it is actually tomorrow. So be much in prayer for him. Uh, do be much in prayer for the church and the building down here. We've got all the paperwork turned in and all those things. Uh, Start to move. It won't go. It won't be ready to go before the board this week, but it should be ready to go before the board next week. Maybe. Hopefully next week. So we're hoping it goes before the board next week, and we'll kind of find something out. But do be much in prayer. Either way, we want the Lord's will to be done. Be much in prayer for all the services that we have here. Do you remember next Friday night? Johnny's watching all your kids. Uh oh. So uh, next Friday night we have movie night here. Might not have a church here. Huh? Might not have a church. Might not have a church. Lamp, I will bring a cattle prod or something we'll to make sure. Dead young if we don't. Like it. Yeah, we'll make sure we. We'll make sure that you got something to do, and if you don't have something to do, we'll bring some rakes and shovels, and we'll find you something to do. Now we've got plenty going on for that. Be much in prayer for that. Have a, have we've had a. A good recommendation as well. So after after we get this done, after after this uh, a young couple's night out, we're going to plan a uh, old man's night. Uh, well, and I'm not going to say an old man's <laughs> night out. We're going to plan a. a it's not just for me. We're going to plan an elders' day out. Uh, so uh, it will. But you know who elders are, right? It's people like Eddie and Dennis, me. And uh, anybody, anybody wants to go, Buck and all those young guys, we're going to get together, and I think we are going to go down, we're going to go down to the Mayflower. What a wonderful suggestion was made to me. I mean, what does it? I mean, why in the world? Would, I mean, I don't know why somebody had to had to mention to me that we need to go eat. I mean, because you know, I, I generally think of that on my own. So we'll get we'll get to plan something up, and one night we'll get together with these uh, men and women and see. Uh, uh, when they'd like to go. So we'll plan something up for that. Be pr much in prayer for that. Uh, also be much in prayer for uh, sunrise service. It was always already mentioned to me as well. I had need to get on the ball. So we will be having April the 4th. We will be having sunrise service here, 7 p.m. or 7 a.m. Uh, and so we'll start. Who's going to preach that? We do not know yet, but we know the Lord will guide that. So be much in prayer for all those. Anything else that I need to put on the list for me to do? Nothing else? Shoot, I figured everybody would be speaking up something for me to do. Amen. All right. Anybody got anything on you? Anybody needs to be anybody else needs to be added to the prayer list? Anything else needs to be mentioned? Hearts and minds is clear. We'll all gather around everybody that can and will. We'll gather around the altar and we'll go to the Lord in prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again tonight, dear Lord, to stumble on our step before thee. Thank you for another day and another opportunity, God, to gather out into your house and into thy presence. Lord, we thank you for each one that's made it out this way. And I pray now, dear God, you give a special blessing. Lord, upstairs and down. Lord, we pray for those that's on this prayer list. We pray for Gene Osborne, Johnny Triplett, Billy Jimmy McFadden, and the Simcox, and Clifton and Adam, uh, Dundan staff, Louise Martin, Joy Mary Bishop, Kevin Denard, the Reason family, Carol Forster, the youth group. Lord, just touch that in a mighty way, God. David Wilson, Carter Harris, Candy Greer, Ashley Wyatt. Uh, unspoken request, uh, Jalen Sutherland, Crystal Main, uh, Parker Robinson, uh, Danny McAuley, Crystal Jones, Margaret and Walter Adams. Uh, we pray for Lord for Brother Eddie Cross and Andy Lowe and David Burnett, uh, Larry, the Larry Stout family, Lord. Uh, we pray for Ruth Hodge and Becky Wilson and Brother Eddie's family, Ebenezer Christian Home, Ross Stout, Zach Walton. Uh, Dennis and Hazel, we pray, Lord, for the new building down here, the lawn, and everything that's happening. God, you just take care of it the way you see fit. Uh, Danny Buchanan, Chuck Mays, Mary Stanley, Lucas Perdue, uh, the COVID victims, Brian Sigmund, Cynthia Phillips, Stacey Dow, uh, Erlene Lay, Josh and Natasha, and that family, Lord. Uh, we pray for the Tipton family. We pray for Chris <coughs> Wallace, the Trivet family. Uh, Lord Henry, God, we pray for Danny Cornette and his procedure tomorrow, Lord. We pray for our family. We pray for David Ward. We pray for Aiden and family. Uh, Stacy Pete, Mike Carroll, Mindy Moorefield, Asa Main, Elaine Kirby, our son Aaron Steele, and Stella Payne, Emily Church, Nursing Home, Sandy Leonard, uh, Melissa's family, Ann Hancock, Janice Johnson, Chuck Moorefield, the website requests that we get, Lord. Uh, Gerald Cooper, Estelle McKinney, our country, Joyce, and uh, Haley. Lord, we pray, God, that you'll just touch in a mighty way through the service tonight. Lord, every, every person that was mentioned on this list tonight, God, I may not know what they're facing. I may not know what they're going through, but I know you do. And I pray, God, you'll touch them and, and help them in the way that they need. Lord, I pray for every family and everyone that makes up Heavenly Light Baptist Church. God, you'll just continue to strengthen them. Help us, Lord, to grow in the spirit and truth yes. and number, if it be thy will. I pray, God, that we see souls come to be saved. Yes. Now, lead God direct through the services upstairs and down. Touch Jason and them as they go downstairs, Lord. Give the words that's needful. Touch those kids, God. We give you all the honor and the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. 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 Here tonight, we're starting out here at verse number 12. We'll just go ahead and get started into it. And 
And the Bible said here in verse number 12, says, For as the body is one hath, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So what he's going to talk about, he begins to use the body as an example or as a reference uh, to, the, to the family of God, to, to the structure of God. And what we need to really realize is, is that we are just a part of the body of Christ. Amen? Uh, and if one thing really, it really the analogy that he uses for, is for the unity of the church as well. And when we think about the body, we also need to think about it like this. Uh, the body is fitted together perfectly. Amen? Yeah. What if your ears was on your feet? Wouldn't make much sense, would it? What if the eye, if your eyes uh, were on the top of your head? Wouldn't make much sense, would it? The body is fitly joined together. When Paul's talking about the church, and he's talking about the church here, he's writing the Korean and talking about the church. And we need to realize is that God has us put together for the right reasons. Amen? He's got us put together because we fit together. And that's one of our heart's desire, our heart's prayer. And that be our prayer each time we pray that God puts us where he wants us and God puts those that he wants here, here. Amen? Amen. And that way we are fitted together. Yet, I, listen, I know we've got to at least all but one up here tonight that understands about getting a little bit older. Amen? And, and things don't necessarily work as good as what they used to work. Amen? Amen. I, I mean, don't, don't always work the way they're supposed to work. And, and, and things kind of hurt. That, that, I, I mean, you have aches and pains that you never knew you had. You know what? I've noticed that I cannot get down, get back. Now, when I get down the floor, get bend down to do something, I cannot stand back up without making noises. Whoa. I have no idea why. Yeah. Melissa said, Melissa Hall said, what was that? I said, no, no, I just got up. I mean, hey, <laughs> and for some reason, you just began to make all these noises and things. But here's what I'm saying. You know, we are fitly together. Even though that things might hurt or things may not work exactly the way I want to, I still don't want to get rid of them. Amen. Amen. So for some reason, and thank the Lord it ain't been bothering me too bad in the last few weeks, but for some reason I, I've gotten arthritis in this joint, in this thumb. And I have no idea. I mean, if there for about a month, I told them, listen, when I first wake up in the morning, it's all I can do. It's like it has to pop back into place. I don't, I mean, fortunately it may still hurt a little in the mornings, but it's not been as bad. But I was thinking, you know, even though that thing just about fought, wants to fall off, or I feel like it's going to fall off, I don't want it to fall off. No. Amen. I, I still want it. We need to realize that in God's house and in the church of God, we all have a purpose and we all have a reason. Now, can we operate and can we function without some of those things? Yes, we can. But we all, but it's a whole lot better. We function a whole lot better if we have all the members. Amen. Yeah. Uh, there's things that we can do without, but there's things I don't want to do without. Amen. Uh, there's things that would be a whole lot better uh, if we allow, if we just took it all. Amen. Uh, if we done it all, can we function without those things? Paul was saying here that what we need to realize is, uh, he said, we're all many members, but we're all one body. We need to realize this too is not only, are we, I was thinking about this today. Now we've heard the old, sto old saying about it, like running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Now how many of you have actually seen a chicken run around with its head cut off? Now, there's a few of it. About, about everybody here has seen a chicken run around with its head cut off. Now how long did that chicken run around? Not too long. Yeah, about, about one or two rounds and it's done, right? I mean, it didn't take very long. And that's exactly the same way it is with the church. We cannot function and we cannot operate without the head. Amen? Amen. Uh, we cannot function or operate without the head. And we don't want to operate without the head. Uh, uh, but it's just like this. We need to realize that we might be able to function without one or two. I may be able to function without, but I don't need to function that way. The church is designed that we are come together. Yeah. This is where we come to. And that's why he said for, in Hebrews for us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together because it's a vital part of us being able to grow. Right. 
There's all, and listen, I appreciate everybody that tunes in. I know everybody can't make it down to church and everybody doesn't have a God-fearing church somewhere. But look, when you have an opportunity to get out, it is important. Listen, if you cannot get out, I don't know why the Lord just put this on my heart, but if you're listening and you cannot get out, and you, this is the only form of being able to attend church you have, you need to, I, I, I understand that, but you need to reach out to some of these folks. These folks right here need to talk to you, and they need to pray with you, because we need to have some human interaction, not just over an internet connection somewhere. Amen? Uh, even if it's just on a phone call, uh, it's good to be able to fellowship uh, with brothers and sisters. Some of them might not be able to get out, might be local here. Uh, hey, we've got brothers and, love, brothers and sisters love to come visit you. Uh, if that's what you need, amen? You say, what's he signed us up for? I have signed you up for nothing. You signed up when you got your name written down in heaven, amen? amen. You got signed up over there. Hey, I tell you what, if the Lord sends us to visit, I bet you what, they'll be work, he'll be working on the other end, amen? There's things that we need to realize to do. We didn't just get saved to come and sit down here on the pew, amen? We're not put together for, all, for us all to do the same thing. We've got different things to do. Sure. All of us are called to do different things. We don't have the same functions. The thumb doesn't do what the toe does. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, man. That's right. Well, the eye doesn't do what the hand does. But we've got all different things to do within the church. You say, well, I don't have a job in the church. See me at the church. I'll make sure you've got a job to do within the church. There's always something to do with the work of the Lord. You know, God called some of us to be preachers. He called some of us to be uh, pastors. He called some to be deacons. He called some to be uh, piano players and, and different things. And You know, God has us fit together. You know, I told Brother Eddie, I told some others this uh, a while back. It's, you know, I don't know why. But the Lord has just blessed us and been able to have some good deacons, some good men in the church. And now when Melissa starts asking me questions about what we're going to do, I say, I don't know. Talk to your deacon. <laughs> no, look, I'm glad that we've got brothers and sisters that we can call on and we come together. And we, we may not all agree all the time, but we, I think one thing that we will always agree on, if we don't always agree on this, then we're going to have to we're going to have to do some stirring up, amen? Now, the one thing that we'll always agree on is that whatever we do, let's do make sure it's the Lord wanting us to do it, amen? Now, let's do it for Him, and we'll do it. Listen, we've only got two. We've only got two reasons. We've only got two things that the Lord has called us to do, and that is to win the lost, and that is disciple His children, amen? Now, disciple those that are saved. If we get outside of those things, then we're losing focus. Now, those things we can do outside the church and, and those types of things that, that have some events and stuff for those that are here, but we want to make sure that we grow through those things. We grow closer together, and people see us having fun and having a good time as children of God. Yes. Amen. Look, I don't want us to come together and see. I might probably say this, but let's not coming up here and we stop by a store. I ain't going to say what store. We stop by a store. And Melissa asked me a question when we got in the car. I said, was that a man or a woman or a woman that was trying to be a man or a man trying to be a woman? I said, no, no, no idea. No idea. Look, I want to promise you something. I don't want us as a church to try to be something we're not. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't want us to try to be something that we're not. God called us to be a child of God. Right. He called us to be a church of His. Set up here to do the right thing. Amen. And I want you to know that we should be no mistaken of who we are. Should be no misunderstanding of who we are. We are to make sure that the world knows that we stand for Christ and Christ alone. On the solid rock I stand. Amen. No, all other is sinking sand. We need to make sure that we come together. They know who we are. They know what we are and what we're for. But we also need to make sure that if we are a part of the body of Christ, listen to what he said in the book of Galatians. Chapter 2, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, even though I live, 
It is not me that lives. It's he right. that lives within me. Right. My, 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 my <coughs> dedication and my obligation are to be to live for Christ. Yes. Are to be to live for him in everything and all things. We cannot do, I was thinking about this today too, we cannot do anything. The Bible tells us that he is, he's the tree of life. We are just the branches. What can a branch do? I'm saying about flowers and different things, and this is all fake right here, so it don't really matter. But I was thinking, if you take that, if you take that branch off that tree, what's it going to do? It's going to die. Out. Yeah. It can't produce fruit. I'm saying about this as well. Even though I'm the branch, even though I'm the branch, I cannot do one thing without the tree. Amen. He said, "I am the vine, and you are the branches." Without the vine, I cannot produce a fruit. I might make something look good. I might like something taste similar. Amen. And if there's anything about it, you want to know anything about tasting similar, trust me. I've only been on a stinking keto diet for three days, a carb diet for three days. And I can tell you one thing. I've tried that other kind of sugar. That stuff ain't sugar. Amen. <laughs> That's the, the, I've tried diet drinks. Didn't diet drinks. That ain't Coke. Amen. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> Let me just tell you right now, you're not going to have an imitation, not in the family of God. You might have somebody put on a show and pretend. we got a lot of people that pretend and go through the motions and go through the actions, but they've never accepted the Lord. There's more to it than just showing up. Amen. I'm glad I'm a part of the body of Christ. Amen. You cut your, cut your finger off and lay it over there to the side. They may even want it. It's supposed to be on the body, but if it ain't in the body, it's not of the body. Right? We want to be a part of the body. We want to be in the body. Listen to what he said here in verse number 13. He said, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, uh, whether we be bound or free, have been all made to drink into one spirit. So what he's saying here, listen to what he said over in the book of Galatians again, chapter 3, verse 28. He said, Neither is the he said, neither, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, and there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So you see what he's saying? When it comes to being a Christian, we're just a child of God. It doesn't matter what we are. It matters who we, it matters who, we who is living within us, who, who has saved us, and what we're following after. There is only one way to Christ. There's only one way to be saved. It don't matter if you're a Jew. It don't matter if you're a Gentile. It don't matter if you're bound. It don't matter if you're free. Uh, he said right there plainly, uh, he said, for the body is one, uh, or, or say, he said for this, by, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. And it, by, did you see what he said? Sure. By water you're baptized. <laughs> is that not what he said? No. So we understand that it is by, we are baptized into the body by what? By the Spirit. Yes. Amen. By the receiving of the Spirit. They don't have anything to do with the water or any of those things. That water has a an outward re representation, amen, of, of putting that old man to death. That old man died before you ever got up there, before you ever went to get baptized. So, he said right here, we were born into that thing. We are baptized into that thing by the Spirit of God. Now, listen to what he also said about the Romans. He said, so we being many are what? One body. He also went on and said, No, you're not, that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. And therefore, we are buried with him in baptism into death. That like as the Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Amen. For we are planted, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, and we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. As you know, as you good to know, listen, what he on, went on to say, uh, uh, said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, uh, that the body of sin might be destroyed, uh, that henceforth we should not serve sin, uh, for he that is dead is free from sin. Uh, now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So we see that we have this baptism and of the Spirit it is our regeneration, our renewal under the Lord. Amen. Ain't that good to know? 
good to know that we are saved by him. There's only one way to get there. It don't matter who, it don't matter what religion they have, it don't matter how many new ways and new things that they come up with. When they do those things, they have created a way. You know when it gets right down to things, they, they speak, people will tell you all kinds of stuff, right? People tell you all kinds of different things, and it amazes me how many times people will try to walk around the truth. Don't you, you, yeah. you, I mean, if you don't believe me, talk to them again. I mean, they'll try to walk. Just, you know, that's just one example, amen. I mean, it's just one example. I, I called about that card today, last. Well, I, I, I asked the same question I've asked before about, you know, does this happen pretty often? Well, well it's only certain years. Well, you don't even mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't know what years those are. They didn't tell me. But here's what I'm thinking. So many times people walk around that truth and get The facts is the facts. Sure. I mean, eventually it's got to get down to the facts, right? I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what new thing you come up with. Paul, uh, Paul met a bunch of them there on Mars Hill, but they met every day. That's all they want to do is come up with some new way. But Paul said, that guy that you don't even know about, that unknown God down there, that's who I want to talk to you about. Because you don't know him, amen. Because you never met him. He is the only way. I promise you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's going to be the same way when we, the way we got saved. It'll be the same way our children get saved. It'll be the same way that our grandchildren get saved. It'll be the same way that this world gets saved is to come to know him and to come to throw him. Paul wasn't writing about old water uh, baptism here. He was writing about the baptism of the Spirit. He said in verse 14, he said, For the body is not one member, but many. So we need to remember that, that the body of Christ is not... Now, and I say that. I say that for this as well. We need to realize that we are not in this thing alone, not just here at Hamilton Baptist Church. We've got brothers and sisters all over the world. Yeah. All over the world that we need to realize that, hey, that's a part of us. You know, there's nothing like going somewhere and meeting the child of God. Right. You know what I mean? There ain't nothing like it. You just kind of fit in. You ever been in a place where you didn't really feel like you fit in and then all of a sudden you met somebody that was your people? I like I like, I like what it says, brother. I like, I like what it says. It says that find your people and stick with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So listen, it, it, it's, it's always good when you get around a group of folks that you that that, that you this party that you just know. You, your spirit bears witness with their spirit, and their spirit bears witness with you. And I mean, you can just fellowship that way. I, I'm glad when we when we get out in some of those places, the Lord sends some of those people by. You know, I think that's why it's important for us as Christians to be Christians everywhere we go. And it's been important for us to be able to reach others no matter where we go. Whether it's here in our local area, whether it's outside this area, where we go on vacation in different places. All of uh, uh, that's not here now, but him and Teddy Lewis have been good friends for years. You know how I met Teddy Lewis? I want to appear at Myrtle Beach. Because I had a Christian shirt on. And he stopped and asked me about the Christian shirt. We got to talking and figured out we was both from Johnson County. <laughs> Amen. Uh, been many, many years ago. Been a long, long, long time ago. But you understand, we need to make sure that we're that type of person and we're that, that, that child that God's called us to be everywhere because that we are not, we're just a small member. We're just a small member in the family of God. He said, yeah. for, he said for the body is not one member, but many. He goes on 15, he says, If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? You know what? We got a lot of this goes on, and no matter what walk of life. I, I have a couple notes in my Bible that I wrote down, and Here's what I get out of this whole chapter, and it can be summed up like this. You, you know what the Lord's telling us to do this? Just do you. Yep. Do you know what God called you to be? You. He didn't call you to be me. He didn't call you to be Eddie Cross. He didn't call you to be Travis. He didn't call Buck to be Dennis. He didn't call none of us to be somebody else. He called us to be us. Amen. Some of you are shouting amen. <laughs> amen. 
Look, he called us to be us. And now, you know what God wants you to do? He just wants you to be the Christian. That's what I wrote God to across the bottom of my Bible. I've got this road. Be the Christian that God called you to be. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, that's ex- uh, this whole chapter summed up. Be what God called you to be. He goes on right here. He said, if the, if the foot says, hey, man, I, I, I'm not a foot, I'm not a body. I just because I, if the foot says, he said right here, if the foot says, uh, because I'm not the hand, uh, I'm just not going. We got too many people trying to do what somebody else, God's called somebody else to do. Amen. We want, if you ever want to do something in the house of God, we generally make room for you to be able to do something in the house of God. But now, if you ever want to do something in the house of God that you might be seen, I hope we never let you get it out of the pew. Amen. 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 I hope we never, you never make it out of the pew. Listen, because that song that we've been singing for such a long time now, for 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 quite a while now, nobody but Jesus. Amen. I like the song that the the the, the verse. I mean, I like every one of the verses. But I like the last verse. It says this. Let me go down in history. It's just another blood-bought, redeemed Christian. Just another blood-bought. It said, if, I, if my name's never known, I can't remember it off the top of my head now. But if I can, my, basically, if I never remember, that's fine with me. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but him. And that's what we want. That's what the body ought to be. That's where the body operates. Not just because you're not doing a certain thing. Amen. How many times have you seen people? Brother Johnny told me we had a, we talked last week. I believe it was the last week or week before. It might have been even longer than that. Now she had that transmission that van come in. What was a motor? I put it up. No, something about transmission, wasn't it? Something about one was covered under warranty, barely covered under warranty. There was a transmission coming every morning. You had a mechanic said, I ain't going to work on that. I won't fix that because it wasn't going to get paid as much. He said, that's fine. I'll fix it, but you ain't going to watch me fix it. That meant he was going home. And let me just tell you something. Just because, just because you can't have it your way does not mean that you're not needed. It does not mean that, you, that you're going to get it your way. You get it. You may not. You may not have to do what you asked to do, but you may not get to do nothing else either. Amen. Uh, you may not even get to eat that week. Let me just tell you. Hey, God has all of us in a place, like we said, in verse number twelve and verse number thirteen. He has all of us in a place that so we've been able to fitly work together. Inside, a lot of you boys work on cars and different things. And, you take gears inside of a, it don't matter if it's a motor, you take a bunch of gears that work together. A lot of times those gears are different size because of the way you want things to run, whether faster or slower. Amen. Understand, you take a big one, a, a little one, and it's going to operate different. You change the sizes out, and it's going to operate a little different, just like a bicycle. You change the, you got a 10-speed bicycle, you change the, the sprocket on the back, it's going to be harder to pedal or, or easier to pedal. Now, if you took that, if you've got these gears and they're running together and you took that big gear out and you put it down here where this little gear is and this big gear up here where this little gear is, you done mess everything up. You done completely changed the operation Amen. of it all. Amen? Of every bit of it, you've changed the operation. So that's what God's telling us. Don't worry about being something that you're not. Be what God's called you to be and it will work out. It will work out for the best. Just go on. Try to get a few more tonight. He said, verse number 16, he said, And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And he kind of goes on to the same thing. 17 says, If the whole body were an eye, well then, uh, where were the hearing? And if the whole, e- he- whole were hearing, where were the, s- where the smelling? But had not God set members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Nobody can do the job as well as you that God has called you to do. Now that doesn't mean that I can't do that job. But God called you to do something. And he wants you to do it. And he had it set up and planned for you to do. 
cannot do it exactly the way that God wants you to do. He said, there for us, he said that verse number 19, he said, if there, and if they were all one member, where were the body? You see what he's getting at? Yep. So, if everybody was in the choir, who's going to play the piano? If everybody played the piano, who's going to sing? If everybody was in the choir or on the piano, who's going to listen? We all have a, bot, a part to do. I think we all have some of our jobs, some of the things that we do can overlap. Amen? Some of the things we do can overlap together. But we have to know this, that there are certain things that God has called me to do that he's not called you to do, that we have to perform that act or it does not get done. It's kind of like that old saying that, that everybody thought somebody was going to do it and nobody done it. You know? Because everybody else thought somebody else was going to do it. We need to make sure that whatever God puts on us, that we, we, we fulfill the duties that he gives us. Because it's, people's lives depend on it. I'm not talking about, you know, we take this responsibility of being a Christian so lightly. We look around, you know, here's what makes me, I, and Lord, just give me this, look. We'll do what we can to protect this virus that's been going around. A lot of us wear masks. I wear a mask 90% of the time uh, when I'm out, out there other than here or at home. If I had to go into a store somewhere, I wear a mask, right? Mm -hmm. That I might protect myself and others, mainly a lot of those that I, that I don't bring something home. So we'll go to that extreme to put a mask on to, to, because we know it's a virus that we've never seen. Some of you have felt the repercussions of it. You've felt some symptoms or some effects of it, but you've really never seen it. We'll go to all this trouble to protect ourselves and protect our loved ones from it, but what are we doing to protect our loved ones and others from Satan, from hell? Amen. We've seen the effects of it. We've felt the effects of it. We know that it's real. We know that he's real. Hey, we ought to be going out of our way to do everything we can to protect those uh, that are the, the most vulnerable. We'll go out of our way. We'll find that all these things and we've seen all oh, follow the science. Uh, follow the science, amen. Uh, follow this book right here uh, and know that God is God and God is real. Trust him and uh, realize that God has each and every single one of us. Uh, he has something for us to do. I'll get one more verse. Uh, he said in Verse number two, he says, but now uh, uh, are they many members yet one body? Uh, in other words, what he's saying is, look, uh, we're not all going to be the hand, we're not all going to be the eye, we're not all going to be able to do this, we're not all going to be the song leaders, we're not going to all be uh, the bell ringer, we're not all going to be anything else. We're going to be this, and we're going to be what God has us to be, and we're going to come together, and we're going to do it to please Him. So every head's bowed, every eye right closed, every Christian praying, every heart searches. I ask you, and I have it with you. Are you being, are you doing what God would have you to do? She's just going to play one verse. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If God spoke to your heart, you need to get out of that pew, you need to get on an altar. Come on down. Something you need to bring to Him, so a place you need to draw up closer, somebody you want to pray for. Come on down. Come on down. What a God we serve. So many times in life we carry burdens and we never lay them down. Here's a good spot to lay them down. So many times in life we're worried about what we should have done instead of what we could do. It's time to quit thinking about all the things we should have done and start thinking about what God wants us to do. Anybody else want to come before we pray? What about you pray for us? I pray God will continue to give us some words and help us to say all the things. I pray to God for the kids, God bless them, bless the family, bless the women here, Lord, that 
Chris Little mm-hmm. was going to split some picture of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just one day, he was walking up the city, John. Yeah, John just says, always tell your son to the Lord. Lord. Mm-hmm. Just always remember, keep you first in everything you do. God, I be praying for the Lord, first in my prayer. Amen. 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 We appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody got a word or testimony on your heart before we close. Yeah, I'd like to say a word if it's all right. Sure. I had a thing happen to me this morning, and I'll tell you what, I've about shouted all day. I had to go down to a little store out here to get a little work done on the transmission for another truck I bought. Uh-huh. Need a little welding done. Well, this guy moved into a shop right down the road here. He uh, said he could do some work for me if he wanted to do it. About 15 years ago, I didn't realize it till <laughs> we walked in there, and I had pointed him to Christ about sure. 15 years ago. Yeah. And I hadn't saw him but maybe a time or two since then. Right. And he grew up and got uh, married, and he's got two kids. Yeah. And he lives in West Chips. Right. And I tell you what, that old boy does he blessed my heart from the time I yeah. walked in there. Amen. 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 That's good. Simply because he hadn't forgot Christ. Right. He said, I'm a trying to bring my kids up like I would have brought up. Yeah. And he said, I tell you what, he said, I want to keep them in church. Sure. So I invited him up. I said, he's getting yeah. ready to build him a house down here. Uh huh. And I invited him up whenever he gets moved over. He said he's going to a little church over in West Jefferson or something yeah. somewhere. He said, we, we're small. He said, we only got about 20, 25 or something in yeah. church. I said, what? Compared pretty close to ours. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he was tickled to death to see me, and I was him. Amen. I tell you, it's been a joy all day today. Right, amen. I tell you, the Lord's working all over the place. Just to see somebody that you maybe pointed them to Christ and sure. he accepted it. Amen. Now, that happened a long time ago, didn't it, Beth? Amen. Appreciate that. And be much in prayer for that. Be much in prayer for the church down here. There's people mentioning and talking to me and talking to Melissa every every other day. You find somebody, hey, I heard y'all be in the church and, you know, we'd like to come see you. Or, you I know, I mean, it's all over the place and the Lord's just moving and working. And y'all continue to pray that God's not that we might be seen or heard, but, but people come in and, I mean, get what they need. This world's missing something. This world is absolutely missing something. Yeah. And they need Jesus. They need the Lord. You be about your prayer about that. Anybody have something on your heart? Heart and minds is well, I like that message tonight because I've done without this hand for two years. Yeah. I tell you what, and it, it, it's not easy. Oh no. This, no. There to show I went over to get egg out of the garden. <laughs> When I come back, it's in my hand, but it was broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't tell I was gripping the whole of the egg. Yeah. But it's tough. It's hard to do without a member. It's tough. So be much in prayer. Do we got some members that's uh, having a hard time, going through some things, not coming like you should? Amen. Well, put some on your heart, talk to them. Give them a call. Encourage them. They might just need somebody to say, hey, Think about you. Pray. Besides the preacher that's in the text every thinking day or every other day, <laughs> reach out. Be a, be what God would have you to be. Anybody else? If not, our hearts and minds are clear. Be much in prayer for service this Sunday. Lord's will be done. I think they may be having ice or uh, snow cones downstairs. So if anybody wants to snow cone, I'm sure you're welcome downstairs. Shake somebody's hand. Take your love and God bless you. If it's